Hello, everybody. Uh, we have today this class. The title is What We Can Learn from Children. I'm Haris Tomanovic, and with us is global creator Juan Shu. Do you say Shu? Juan Shu. Juan Shu from Adelaide, <laughs> from Australia, is with us today, and she, she suggested this title also. And we found this title also together. So what can we learn from children? And it, it's maybe like title which many people, when they see this title, they see, they think, oh, this is something boring. This is not something useful. This is something, you know, rationally, like economically, not practical. What can I learn from children? And like, what if you can learn a lot from children? What if it can change your life? When also, Juan, did you learn something from your child, from your daughter? How old is she? She is six now. And to be honest, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be doing access consciousness. I, I would just be pot, potting along to my life going, hey, I'm doing fine. I got good, good job, good husband, good house, good income. What else do I want? Then this little guy came as a surprise. She's a surprise. <laughs> Kinder surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, then I, I like I'm a I'm a very nerdy person. I, I, I do study. When I have a child coming coming, I I research. I'm like, what do I do with this guy? This little little child. <laughs> and and you, <laughs> you didn't also know how it happened, you know, like it wasn't planned. It was really like Yeah, it was hard. not planned at all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the uh, bird, uh, bird br brought her or something like that. <laughs> it's more like a condom that slipped. <laughs> That's <Okay>. another story. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, and she was born, and um, you know there were books like this thick. I went through every page of it, like what to expect in the first twelve months, and then another book this thick. What to expect in the next twelve months. And, and all the problems is, inside, you know, it's book of yeah. problems, book of possible problems. Okay. This is how they prepare you for children. Possible Pretty problems. Pretty much. <laughs> then you have to use it like a dictionary. You go, oh, poop, that's black. Let me look up what does it mean to have a black poop. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the fun two years. Then I realized, hang on, like... No matter how many books I read or have read or have studied or how much Google search I did, I, I have no clue how to raise this being up. Like she is something bigger. I got, to, I got to become bigger to actually assist her or guide her. That's actually when I started the journey of access consciousness. And now raising her is not a problem the question is hey how much fun can we have together and really what can I learn from you um, that question has has set myself free that I stopped judging myself as oh my god you are a terrible mom you don't know what your daughter's having for the three meals you don't know well, how many poop she does each day and you don't know what's going on at school I look at this being I'm like, hey, are you content? Yep. Are you happy? Yeah. What else can we create together? She's like, yay. And that's how we create together now. And what is it like for you, Harris? <laughs> are you there? Yes, I just lost a little co connection. You can just speak. Even if I, I, I'm not here, you can just speak. Somebody sure. was just calling me, so I, that's why I jumped out. So I, I got the call. Okay, just speak. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So what is, what is parenting for you? For me? <laughs> and also, like, I wanted to ask you, so, like, did you start to learn because she started to be boss in your house? She overtook your house. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and my life. <laughs> like, yeah. So daughter became your boss. Daughter became a uh, Is Harris gone? Boss in your house of your family, your husband. So then you started to think. So she's taking over, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I need to do something yes, about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what I learned, like, I was, like, I, I just knew, like, parenting. 
and have also a daughter like maybe it would be like more comfortable if the, to have a son you know it's different like when you have a daughter for, for me like if i'm a man somehow also it's just easier if you have maybe a son so and also like just to have a child is so different life than without having a child and I was practicing with having a dog at least before that. So I <laughs> I had some responsibility already in my life. You know, I had a dog before that. I even had two dogs. So I Does knew Does having a husband to... count? <laughs> Does that count as a practice? <laughs> yeah, so practice, yeah, husband is a practice, yeah. So like... <laughs> Maybe your relationship is a little different. <laughs> maybe you are a child of your husband. Maybe he's not your child. Maybe you are not the child, you know, but usually like husband is a child, also another child. So it can count. So like you need to wake up for somebody. You need to take care about somebody. Like you need to move your body when you can't move your body, you know? So it's creating something in your in your life. and. You need to clean so much shit and everything, you know. So I learned something already from having a dog. And I just knew, like, so with this child, there is something new happening, in, uh, showing up in my life. And this is why also I was interested to have a child. Because, like, some kind of, I, I knew that it's going to be a big contribution to my life. And... Like Thai is one of my, my the most amazing creations, like my biggest treasure. And I'm learning so much from her. And also I'm happy that I can share this on the classes, what I learned from her because I'm, I need to mute somebody. I don't know who, my, yeah, okay. So, um, I'm sharing also with so many people what I learned from her. So is there, and like it's some, some kind of, we don't need to verbalize everything. We don't need to say everything. And maybe we are going to acknowledge some things during this class. So like what I can say, like first thing what comes up for me, what I learned from Taya is how amazing space she is. And it's just incredible. You are learning how to be this. Like, also what they are with their body, what they are with their space, how they are enjoying life, how they are present and simple and happy. It's just wow. And you are learning again how to be this lighter space. Like some kind of adult people are heavier space, some harder space. And children are some lighter space. So this is amazing contribution for me, amazing contribution for my body. Thai is also my, uh, the most, uh, the most beautiful, the most amazing, the most incredible body process. Some kind of, it's advanced body process for me. When I put her body on my body, is the best process that I can receive. And it's really amazing. Yeah. So they are amazing gifts. So what can we learn from them? That's amazing. I remember there was a time when I was really lost last year. I was holding my, uh, she was five years old, um, Anya, from school. And I'm like, hey, Anya, why are you here? Like, what, what do you want to create in your life? Um, I'm really unhappy. Do you have anything for me? <laughs> She's like, okay, you want some magic there? Magic. Then, then that, that, that's how she does magic, here magic. Um, that actually completely transformed my energy then. There was like, hey, I'm, it's just like, it, it, it was this exuberant joy that you can't really verbalize. It's like, why, why aren't you having fun, mommy? Like life is so much fun. Why wouldn't you have it? And I do wonder how many of you, if you have children or if you, if you have dogs as children, <laughs> how, um, how much joy are you, are you learning from them that you have not yet truly acknowledged yet? Yeah. 
And also, like what we are learning from them is also how commitment, how committed they are to their choices, or when they are creating something, when they are choosing something, what they are willing to be, you know, for some ice cream, for something what they would like to have, what they are willing to be, like they are willing to be anything. They are willing to be the biggest mo monster, the saddest person on this planet you know the angriest person on this planet just to get it and it's it's like what can we learn from this like how how much you can be anything for your choices whatever it takes and also sometimes when they don't when they know that they can't have it when you are sure that you are not going to give them this like if you allow yourself to be good manipulator they also just stop and yeah. they try something else. So some kind of what we can learn from children, what I, I was learning from our child is how incredible manipulators we can be. How, how much did you, did you recognize from your child how your <laughs> child is incredible manipulator? And what did you learn from your child about manipulation that you maybe already forgot <laughs> from your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> so, <A> lot. <laughs> does mama knows better now how to get ice cream <laughs> totally <laughs> <laughs> so what can you say about this <laughs> well it, it's really so funny and i like anya is um she's really like my daughter anya is really aware she knows how how everyone function and it's so funny to watch her being different, be behave differently and talk differently to every single, uh, to different family members. Like her grandpa, she knows where where his boundary is and he will always fulfill her needs. And with mom, she knows she, she can never cross that line and she cannot argue or cry her way out. Then she will go, mommy, do you like ice cream? Mommy, would you like to make something beautiful? And then I'll take her to the shops and I would pay for everything that she wants. <laughs> it, it, this is amazing. And um, the when I see when she has no point of view, or she actually has no point of view of how it's going to show up. <laughs> and she can forget about her tantrum in two seconds, if she realized this does not work, okay, I'm just gonna switch mode. I'm just gonna be the happy pants. And if that's what I'm gonna get, is that if that's what's gonna get me what I want, then I'm gonna be that. It, it's just magical. Yeah. So, and also like they're, they're being this all the time, some kind of all the time, they are being some this irresistible space where it's hard to say them no, you know, they are, they know how to be this kindness and cuteness to get anything from you. And they are this irresistible place, you know, they are this cute space when like, it's really hard for most of the people to not to give them something or what they desire or not to do something for them. So incredible space that they are being. So what can we learn from our children? What else? What else did you learn from her? <laughs> um, <laughs> you said it really well, Harris, about being the irresistible, irresistible space. Because we talk about that a lot with class education and business, um, and just the fun of actually the fun of creating. That's what I learned from her as well. She's like, hey, it's um. I, I do wonder if we start to create like children and do run our business like children, hey, this is really fun. Would you like to come here and play with us? And really have no point of view of whether whether people actually come or not. You're gonna have a good time anyway, no matter what. That's such an imitation space of imitation and that's really irresistible. So you might become a millionaire if you learn something from your children doing business. Yeah. So, and what they do, so they are playing and it's not so important what exactly they are playing or 
target of playing is more about being playful, being playing, and no matter what that is exactly. So it can be not so important game. It can be that they are not following the rules so much. You know, it's not so serious game and they are just playing something. So they are playful all the time. They are movement somehow all the time. They are creative all the time. And it doesn't need to be with target. It doesn't need to be so serious. You don't need to know exactly what you are doing. So what can we learn from this? How much we can just relax in our life and we can just play? How much we can just also play this class? What if we are playing? And also like maybe you can acknowledge how much you are more like a child than other adult people. Also the way how we do now class. We are having fun more like children and we are not doing some serious um, serious class of adult people, you know, when they have uh, some serious psychological analysis, you know. <laughs> so what if we are, we can acknowledge also ourselves how much we are more like children and not childish, you know. Mm -hmm. Being like a child or childish, it can be two different things. Totally. And also, like, yeah, what is interesting, what I learned from her, like, one of the things what, what, peop what children are using to manipulate, they are using that they are children. So because they are a child, they can do anything. Yeah. You know, this is because this is point of view of adult people, but they don't know anything. They are children. And this is what I, I didn't allow our daughter to do so much. So I was saying to her, like, when she was four, I was saying to her, stop doing this. You can't behave like this. You are not five anymore. She was behaving like five years old. She was still four only. <laughs> but like, they are using this because they are five, four, nine, that they can do anything. So what if you don't need to make like your child childish what if you can see your child more as a grown-up person and that your child can take responsibilities very fast and that they know something and that they are powerful because like if you think that they are powerless and if they are stupid maybe you are the stupid one <laughs> <laughs> so what if your child is powerful creator and they know a lot and i would say to anybody like Treat a child as soon as possible as a grown-up person. And this is how your contribution also to your child. And you can create also a better life for yourself. And some people, they don't do it. You know, these people have 30 years old son, you know. They have a child, like they're asking me also in classes, what can, what can I do with my child? Like I ask them, how old is he? How old is she? Like 50 years old, 55, 68. Oh my God. <laughs> so what if child is, is more grown up than you think? And what if they know something? And what if they are powerful creators? So what can we learn from our children about this? And how powerful creators they are that they chose us for their parents? What do they know? You know, we give give them yeah, iPad. You know? <laughs> yeah, we we give them iPad and they can eat frozen pizza and French fries all the time. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do they know? Yeah, and that's, yeah, like, um, actually, yes. that question has um given me so much freedom. Like not treating your child as a child or as a lesser being or as a weaker being because that has given me the freedom to stop judging me not doing enough for my child not be not spending enough time with her traveling too much not knowing what's going on and at school and etc etc but really really when i see her as an infinite being she true she she actually is where she actually has no limitation <laughs> probably less limitations than i do for myself I see as I see her as this powerful being, then the question has, has really turned around to be, hey, what can I be for you now? That will be a contribution for you and me. Um, yes, I'm learning from you. And also, what can I be that would be a co-creation between us? And that really, really have saved me from this 
rabbit hole of judging of self judgment as a parent. Yeah, so maybe you recognize like, what if my daughter created this traveling? <laughs> totally. Yeah, what if she created the time not at home all the time, the time gone? <laughs> totally. So she is even more the boss of the house. <laughs> so you were thinking, oh, hey, mom, you are when are you going to travel next so that yeah. I can have more time with daddy? I'm like, you could totally have it, <laughs> even when I'm here. Yeah, look, you were thinking like this, oh, I'm so bad mother that I'm traveling, I'm not going to be at home for a week. And then when you were on airport, you got it. Oh, she wanted me to go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> oh, she even created my classes, you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> Just like, yeah, so like... If we are too good parents, we are bad parents from my point of view. Like more you are some kind of terrible parent, more also child can create their life. And also like if you are too much physically together, it's maybe not contribution to them. It's contribution to them that they have more people in their life. So they have, and they are creating these people. So they are choosing also who, with who from the family they are going to be, in which school they are going to go. So they are having school. They are having other people in their life. They are creating also their babysitters. So they are creating their life and you are just part of their life and you don't need to take care about everything in their life. And like, this is better for you as a parent and it's better for them because like, if you are the only one, the only person in their life, it could be that you are creating something that is not contribution to them. And if everything depends on you. so. You allow them that they are creating their life, they are creating their school, they are creating their babysitters, they are creating their friends, and you are just contributing to them. So somehow they have their life very soon. Already okay. like four years old, five years old, child, three years old child. They are creating their life also like also younger because they chose you as as, as their parent. They chose this geographical location like. But if she had chosen Australia already before, <laughs> long oh, before. She totally has. <laughs> I reckon like she hired me to make enough money so she can she can hire the school teacher and the friends. <laughs> yeah. So. And it's just amazing. So. Yeah. Anything else what you would like to say? Or maybe we have some questions. Maybe some people would like to say something. Do anyone have questions? What can we learn from children? And also this space what, uh, of learning. This space is very incredible. It's important for me. The space of learning. This is the space for me how also you are choosing to be alive. So you are not asking yourself how you can teach people or how you can teach children. Yeah, all the time question, what can I learn here? What can mm -hmm. I learn here? Also, what can I receive here? So space of learning is for me much better space of creation and contribution than space of teaching or being smart. So it's question what we can use all the time for everything. And this is how we are big, better, bigger space of invitation. Like what if everywhere you go, you can ask yourself, what can I learn here? So in creation with, with a child, when you are creating with a child, amazing question that can be amazing contribution to this creation ship, it, it, it can be what can I learn from this person? So you are not su superiority, you are not separation. And this is how you are opening yourself to creation ship. So what can I learn from this person? Yeah. And that's really opening up the childlike wonder that you were talking about. Like you're being like a child, you're just wondering what's gonna happen without having to have a conclusion. And um, it's funny because there are there there are a lot of um, Chinese participants on this call. Um, in in Chinese, learning means you're inferior to the teacher, and when you're learning from someone, you're inferior. And that's not really what we are creating here. It's actually about being question of what you can create with your child together without being 
being the one with the right answer, nor are you placing your child into a superior position where oh they are they are your boss, you have to you have to yeah. obey or be manipulated. It's not that. It's it's so, totally co creation. Some kind of you don't need to lose yourself when you are learning from something. You can be included and this is when you are learning, you are receiving. She she's there going to the toilet now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, <Maya. laughs> she don't see us. So when you are le le learning, you are some kind of space of receiving, and you allow yourself to be. So, what if like learning and receiving is very similar thing, and you don't need to lose yourself. So you you are not something less when you are learning. You you just like you don't make also another thing less. Yeah. So you are not making yourself less and still we are not making another thing less than us. So this is something that is not contribution to creationship when you are making another person less than you. Totally. So you don't need to make anything less. And have you have you guys noticed that since we like we haven't done any clearing in this call? Uh, we were just asking questions. Have you noticed that in the past half an hour you have not been able to judge you or your children? Can you repeat? I didn't understand you. Like in the past half an hour, we didn't do any clearing, we didn't do any access clearing, but we were just asking questions and exploring what we can learn. And in the past half hour, half an hour, have you noticed that you have less judgment of you and your children? Yes. <laughs> yes, totally. You, both of you created a kind of a huge space of allowance. And uh, I just want to make some comment about the question that Harris asked, what, what can I learn here? Because I was going in the judgment of myself as a mother. And from the, the day that he, he just gave me this question, it shifted a lot in my world. And I, I mean, I felt that I was having a kind of filter and it's just disappeared. And uh, uh, when I would like to ask you what your child teaches you about yourself what you could acknowledge uh, about yourself because of your child. And thank you so much, both of you, for this amazing contribution. Thank you. It's so funny when I'm upset with Anya, I'm like, why are you so stubborn? And I look at the mirror, oh, she's got a stubborn mom. <laughs> and I learned it long before <laughs> that um, they say when you see your children, or whatever they are, whatever trait that you are showing, you don't have to look further than you and your husband, really. <laughs> and she has shown, she also has shown me that um, she has reminded me how joyful I naturally am. Like the joy she be um, is a reminder, is a reminder for me to to know that how how happy I am and how different I am since a child and how, ma how much I have actually uh, hidden that away to look normal. And when I see her unstoppable and unhideable joy, I'm like, I'll have that, i be that, and that's me. And that's actually, when you, when you ask the question, that's what's coming up. Uh, Amel, is it Amel? Yes, yeah, Amel. Amel, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's what's coming up. And there's, there's way more, way more than that. My question for you, honey, is what have you, what can you acknowledge about you when you see your child? Oh, that's funny. There's so many things, so many things, especially because they were, as you said, they pushed me to some classes yeah. and it's funny. And now I just acknowledge that they even pushed me to be in some countries. And, and uh, I learned so much from them, especially when I just change behaving. I mean, I'm more in allowance of myself and of them. Uh, I'm trying to be out of judgment as much as I can. And it's just amazing. A lot of capacities. I, he, they teach me a lot of capacities. Yeah. And so and what else is possible? <laughs> 
And this mm-hmm. energy, what they are being, this playful energy, I also recognize what I, that I, le- I learned it a lot of from Taya and it's amazing contribution to classes. Also like when we have online class like this or when we have body classes, this energy of children, this playful energy is amazing contribution to bodies and it's amazing invitation for more people allow themselves to be this energy that they can be. And when Taya was on the class, it was also incredible. Also when she, she show up sometimes on online class and still like it was, uh, she, she was on some classes also with me as co-facilitator, like body classes. And last time, during last summer, when we had a class in Bali, it was very funny when she was there half time when she wasn't there all the time. So she was there like only afternoons, something like that, after the lunch or something. And participants could see the difference. You know, if child is all the time of the class, they don't see, people don't see so much difference. They don't see so much contribution of the class, of the child. So because Taya was only partly there, only like physically half of, of the class, like for three hours every day, they could see this amazing difference of her space and contribution by being there. It was opening their stuff also from their childhood. And also it was amazing contribution to their body, to their energies. Like this energy of children is invitation to being. And when you can allow yourself to be this joyful, pleasurable, playful being. So it was invitation for them. And it, it also bring, brought up a lot of things from their parents, from their father, from their mother, from everything that happened in their childhood. So they, they could change it more and they could receive more from this. Also the way how, how I was treating her as a child, how, how I was speaking with her, it was just, it was incredible contribution to them. So one of the spaces what I'm being with her or what I was being with her, what was amazing contribution to people is because when I was bad to her or when I was saying no to her, when I was awful to her, I didn't exclude her. No, it's just no. Like for no, you don't need to exclude another person when you say no. And like whatever you are being as an energy, like when you are being also killing energy of saying no to a child or stop this. You can be killing energy and total kindness and caring at the same time. No, and that's it. Or stop it, stop doing this. No ice cream for three years. <laughs> so <laughs> you, are, you are killing energy and kindness at the same time. So you don't exclude them. Do you get like you are not enemies. It's just no. And this is incredible that we can be this. And I would suggest to more people that we are being this because we decided that we are doing something wrong if we are not nice to our child. You can be kindness and not nice at the same time. And when you allow yourself to be this, it's much better for your child. So what people are trying to do, they are trying to be nice all the time. This is creating disaster. Allow yourself to be terrible and with total kindness. So. It's not negative when you are terrible, just be terrible to each other. It doesn't work. And this is creating some different space. Anything else, anybody? There was some question also in the chat. It was in the chat. Oh. Uh, Harris. Oh, yes, just, just speak. Yeah. Um, um, what do you mean by being terrible? Does it mean that you do whatever works for you? Um, or wh- what, what does it mean to you? What, what is it? Do you have an example of being terrible? So the thing is like when child is doing something that is not contribution uh, to the space that we are creating together, you just, you just say it. You just show it. It doesn't work. Like this behavior doesn't work. This behavior is not contribution to other people. Can you stop it? You are not really terrible. You look like terrible. And you are invitation to something else. So you don't need to be nice all the time. Like many people think they need to be nice all the time with their child. And this is what, how they create something terrible. 
So you just say it with total kindness. No, this this doesn't work. You can't do this. Okay? No ice cream for two years. No ice cream for three months. No ice cream for three days. And they get it. Like when you say no ice cream for three days, they get it. They know that you are serious. So it's not just with like many people are trying to be nice all the time with children, especially to be something the opposite as their parents. And it doesn't work. You need to be willingness to be anything. If you are willingness to be the worst parent on this planet, if you are willingness to be horrible, then your children can't manipulate you so much. So what if you can be willingness to be anything and you are not polarizing energies, you are not judging anything, you are not right, wrong, good, bad. You're just being whatever it takes. So if something is created. So you allow yourself to be better manipulator. So your child needs to be even even better manipulator. And this is how your contribution to your child. Did you try this one? Like, did you try to be all the time nice? No, I have not actually. I I I'm a um pretty good manipulator. I would copy her when she throw a tantrum. I'll throw a bigger tantrum than her. When she yell at me, I'll yell at her louder. I'm like. Yeah. Is this how you want to talk to me? I can talk to you like that too. Is it nice? And then she'll shut up. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is what you also learn from them. They can be and do anything. They don't yeah. have any point of view about it. So they are going to beat you. They are going to scream at you. Like why you can't do, do it also. And then yeah. when you when you can do it, when you allow yourself that you can do it, you will not need to do it. Yeah. Because they know that you are going to do it if they are terrible. So you don't need to do it. And if you need to be nice all the time, you are going to have a problem all the time. If you are mm -hmm. willingness to be terrible, you don't need to be terrible. Yeah, totally. And it was so funny. There was one in in instance where um, she's such a good manipulator to my husband, Alan. And Alan's more... As Alan's on the extreme where he's not willing to be not nice and then she will push his button enough until he completely, completely erupt and <laughs> have an adult yeah. tantrum. But that that's actually coming from separation and it's so funny. I could I could watch them. How Anya manipulates, she's like, oh, I'm crying, I'm so sad. But she, what she really wants is to have daddy to read read bedtime story and um, tuck her into bed until she's asleep. So she said, even though I'm not crying, I still need a hug and cuddle. And Alan was at the edge of, of um, being really angry. And I, I threw myself into her bed. I'm like, oh my God, I haven't seen my daughter the whole day. I'm so sad. I want to <laughs> cry. And she watched me. She's like, there's no tears in your eyes. I'm like, but even if I don't have tears, doesn't mean I'm not sad. I just need a great big cuddle. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, mommy, you're copying me. <laughs> and that works like when you actually show them what, what, what they, they are actually doing. She knows, she knows. And she knows if it doesn't work for her, it doesn't work for daddy. They are smarter than that. It's just really fun to play with all of these tools. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Is there Any more question? questions? Yeah, there was something is in Russian. Russian. It's also like I can read side of the text, and there is also one is one question is from from Hatice Suleymanoglu from Turkey. Can you advise something about how can I be a dad and how can I be independent from my family without feeling guilty? So what what means adult? Stop trying to be adult. Okay, adult people are childish. So be be grown up, grow up in your life. So allow yourself that you are creating your life and that you are taking care of things. So some kind of what is family is about control. They are trying to control you so you are never leaving them. That's why they were doing all, all these things for you. And like if you recognize that it's amazing contribution to your life that you leave them, just leave them. And also like you don't need to leave them totally, like just manipulate them but if you can just use them you can manipulate with them and you don't need to leave them 
So how much you are all the time nice to your family, so you need to be terrible with them. Stop being nice or terrible, just manipulate your parents, manipulate your family. So you don't need to totally leave them, just use them for what is required in your life. How much you can manipulate your family, so you don't really need to be in conflict with them. And all these judgments and guilt, you don't need to make it so real and so true. What you do, you are making these judgments, like their judgments about your choices. You are making your guilt true and real. So it's like some obstacle, like physical obstacle. It's not even true. Like judgments or guilt is not true. Okay. And especially it's not some physical obstacle that you can't move. <laughs> so it's not so real. Judgment is not so real. Guilt is not so real. So just you can be a question, how can I manipulate my family? How can I manipulate my parents? Uh, this is how you create amazing life. So, like you don't, really, you don't really need to be in conflict or leave them because that's a, that could be bad manipulation. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is what you can learn from children. Yes. Can I, just speak? Can I, can I ask you a question, Hatis? Is that how you say Hatish. your name? Yeah, Hatish. 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 <laughs> <laughs> how much okay. are you using? Yes, that's me. How much are you using the guilt to manipulate you and your family so you will never grow up and you will never separate from them and you will never choose for you? Like, how much is this question alone a manipulation? Can you ask this question again, please, so that I can translate because I was lost. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. How much, how much are you guilt? And how much are you using guilt as a manipulation to manipulate you and your family so that you will never grow out of, out of your family? You're never going to yeah. yeah. So it's just lie that you're using to manipulate with just stop manipulating with yourself. Manipulate only with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like be truthful with yourself and lie to everybody else. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you are pretending that you are guilty for them many times. Just stop pretending this for yourself. You are not, you don't feel really so guilty. And how much you are, pre you would like to be a good person, how much you are pretending that you are a good person. Just allow yourself to be a bad person and create your life. If you are going to try to be a good person in your life, you are going to create a lot of shit. Be terrible. Yeah. Allow yourself that you are Turkish witch that you can tr truly be. <laughs> you are not just Turkish, but like it's a joke. Okay, but allow yourself to be a witch that you truly are. So use magic to create with people. Well, thank you. Stop, pre stop pretending to yourself. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hi, can I ask a question here from the Arabic chat? Yes, yes, yes. So she is asking how to deal with the jealousy between sisters. The oldest sister or the youngest sister, sorry, the oldest sister is very jealous of her uh, youngest one. Yeah, jealousy. so like what, like what if you would like to make them jealous so you are making yourself important in their life? What if you would like that they are jealous with each other because they are jealous about you, like who is having more of your attention? So what if you need attention and you feel better when people are jealous, when they are fighting for you? So what if like, they don't need to be jealous? What if their jealousy doesn't need to have any influence on you? So what we also do with children, or with family, we are trying to have ideal family or perfect family so we can destroy our family all the time so we can judge them. We have point of view, if two people are sisters or brothers that they need to have good relationship. They don't need to have good relationship. So they can be total enemies. So what is their choice? So what if they are manipulating with you 
with their behavior. And if their manipulation is not having any power, they don't need to manipulate in this way. So because it's significant to you that they have jealousy, they are creating jealousy to manipulate with you. If it's not important, they are not going to do it. They can be anything with each other. So children can make terrible relationship with each other so they can manipulate with you. And they are making fun with you because you are making this so important. So like what if you don't need to have any point of view about this relationship of the children and they are creating their relationship and it's like it's not your thing so much it's not so important they are having their life so you don't need to have ideal family and you don't need to have ideal children yes anything else juan would you like to say something uh, hi. Sorry. Yes. Um, sorry. i just want to ask if you have some tips uh, when there are kind of uh, um, competition between siblings so like whatever it is is just cool you don't need to make it wrong so i just said like what we do we are we are trying to make make it ideal and perfect like they can hate each other and it's their choice they can be the biggest enemies they don't need to be friendly with each other especially if they are arabic children <laughs> like really you don't know uh, that it's normal uh, communication in Arabic countries that you are screaming over each other, like you don't even know this maybe. So it's normal that two children are screaming over each other. So like the way how you say thank you to each, to each other is like how they are saying thank you to each other all the time. <laughs> so this is what they learned from you. This is like, everybody's talking like this. And then like you are in conflict with your husband all the time. And then you are surprised why children are in conflict with each other. Oh my <laughs> God. Like you don't even know what you're doing all the time. <laughs> so it's Arabic children. Like just get over. It's natural way of communication. Whatever they are screaming. Yes, Juan, no, would like to say something? No, it's not about screaming. It's just... <laughs> okay, it's, 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 you can say, I, we, we can say that this was a joke, okay? <laughs> okay, that's fine with me. Other Arabic will be upset. I'm not anymore. It's fine. <laughs> you pushed all the my button is, already. Really, children, yeah, the children can be anything. Like, we, we don't need to make it right, wrong, good, bad. So, yeah. what is also competition, like... It, it's only a valid competition if the parents actually see it as a competition and the parents actually see that they have to make make it even and equal for all siblings and they have to be fair, just and fair. And children will pick up those ideas from the school from, from and from their parents and go, oh, the, what you do is not fair. And and they know, like Harry says, they are manipulating you because you buy into the shit about fair, being fair and square. And oh God, you feel true. guilty <laughs> when they do that, when they do competition and when they're jealous, you feel guilty. And yeah, oh my so. God, they got you in, in, in their fingertip. And they are making fun from you somehow. They are playing competitions oh. to make you crazy. It's uh -huh. just enjoyable. It's enjoyable to make adult people crazy. It's so much what, fun. So, well, if you go, hey guys, if you want to fight, go out and fight, and whoever leaves, come back and have dinner with us. They'd go, no, much, we don't want yeah. to. <laughs> how, ma how much when you were a child, you were making your parents crazy just for fun of it? <laughs> how much you were pressing their nerves just for fun of it, not for some serious reason? It was just funny to do it. It's funny to play with adult people. And also, like, what, what can you learn from animals? What can we learn from animals? Like, when a tiger or lion or wolf is having children, like, they allow their children to play also in a nasty way, in an aggressive way. Like, children are playing also in in bad way. They are not just nice with each other. They create also to each other some uncomfortable space when they are uh, playing. And you can be aware, so what what the, the lioness is going to do, what the female tiger tiger is going to do. They are going to allow their children to play also in bad way somehow. 
and she is going to know the line. She's going to know when they cross the border. And she is just going to hit one of them. Peck! And they are going to stop, okay? So, That's... but if you can be dominant energy in your family, and mm. um, you can be awareness, and it doesn't mean that you are taking care about everything what they do. You can be dominant energy in, in, in their in their life that you know when they cross the line, when they cross the border, when it's too much. And then you can just stop it. And this is also your job in your family. Your job as a parent is not that you are controlling them in everything. You just need to know where is the line. Also, it's from the safety. Like, they can't just do everything also when you are as outside. This is also what I learned when you have a dog. Like, do dog... Can't, dog can't walk just outside everywhere. It's dangerous for the dog. It's not so natural for them to walk in the city. So that's why you show the dog where the dog can walk. And also for children, as a parent, you are dominant energy. You show them where is the line until you allow them that they have their trouble, they have their problems, they have their, their uncomfort, and they are learning with their problems. So you are not solving their problems too fast. What can we learn from children? I just, I, I'm still judging myself when I do some intensity with them because one day uh, they was fighting and they just bring three knives. I said, okay, go ahead, take them and you can kill each other. It's fine for me. And they just look like, they just stop and look at me like this. They were scared. Are you sure? <laughs> and yeah. after that, they just, just, I start judging myself as maybe they will think that it's really what I meant. And I mean, I did it and then, uh, and then I judged myself. How to go out yeah, of this so judgment? How much, like how much of being a parent did you learn from your parents? And what if you can forget about a lot of their behavior? Like many times we had totally controlling parents. So they were controlling everything. You see some people on playground when they are, running for a child or some grandmothers when they are running for the child and they are trying to control every step on the playground like don't go there don't go there don't go there it's crazy just allow your child to fall you know if they fall they are going to learn next time better and just take care that they are not falling too much so they are falling just a little <laughs> something like that <laughs> Anything else, Juan? Would you like to say something? Oh, I, I have a question here from the Arabic Maybe Juan, chat, just I, maybe you, Juan, you... maybe Juan would like to say something. I just asked her. Um, okay. Yes. Amel, yes. can I ask you? Did that work when you asked them to kill each other, and it's fine? Did that work? Yes, that's funny because they just looked at me and are you are you serious, mommy? I said yes, I'm serious. I don't want it anymore. Are you serious, mommy? I said, yes. And they stopped. It was so funny because they stopped. I said, no more manipulation. It's work with your dad, but not with me. And it's so funny because when you was talking about your daughter, it's exactly what they are doing. They, like, it's like they switch. Yeah. <laughs> the, they switch totally when they are, they deal with the person, I mean, uh, differently. And they are so fast. It's one of the things that, I, that my kids teach me. That's so fast in everything. It's amazing. Yeah. Can you, can you now really take the time to acknowledge that this actually worked? Like being a bad mom in your standard work for both you and your children? And Definitely. how how smart and how smart they get it? Perfectly. Yes, totally. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> and I I remember that um in a lot of the in a lot of the uh, conscious kids care, conscious parents books, they say uh, ask your children to be aware, not to be careful, because really, as an infinite infinite being, they have nothing to to protect themselves from. They just need to be aware of it and be aware whether they want to choose it or not. And I have I have been the bad, terrible mom at the playground because my. Uh, my daughter's friend's mom would go, oh, don't go there, it's too high. Oh, don't go there, don't don't jump, don't jump. I would just go, Anya, hold, hold on tight and be aware. If you fall, you might break a leg. She's like, okay, then. And she's holding on tight. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a new space of freedom, even for you. 
<laughs> totally. <laughs> totally, totally. And I do estimate, okay, this is about two meters high. If you fall, you won't die. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> um, that, that's my standard. So you got to know your own standard. And that's, that's, that, that's really so freeing to be willing to do that and actually allow them to break a leg or two and fail you. Totally true. <laughs> You're totally right, because even for you, if for them too, they will just look at you if you react or no. So, yeah. uh, and you, the funny thing is that you, you, you teach them and you teach yourself how, how to just separate the fear and the excitement, because uh, so many times my kids just came to me, I'm scared, and I just look at them, truth, are you sure, are you scared or excited? And they're, wow, excitement, and they just go back happy yeah. <laughs> it's totally. amazing totally. Yeah. totally how lucky are your children when you're being a bad mom like really everyone here how how lucky are they that they've chosen a bad mom <laughs> thanks to empower me <laughs> <laughs> pleasure Juan, I hope that we didn't now inspire more people to make babies really like I think we have pretty good big uh, population on this plan so if, if anybody would like to have a child maybe you can just adopt one or just like take be a babysitter <laughs> okay <laughs> you don't need bigger populations of people just be a babysitter like try with some like child for one hour okay don't like choose it immediately for whole life or rent a child for a few hours yeah, yeah just, <laughs> Oh, new uh, business idea. <laughs> yeah, be a, like babysitter, nanny. Also, you can do class classes for children. Really, like some kind of you don't. Some people don't have child here, so you don't need to have your own physical child. Also, like I don't own my child personally. I'm more contribution to my child. It's not my ownership, so it doesn't need to to be my child physically. All the children on this plant are my children. And like, you can just, if you would like to be more time with children, just do classes with children. You can do bars with children. You can do other workshops with children. Then you can choose different jobs, which are more with children. So you are more time with them and you are learning with them. And yes, you have nephews and nieces. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can I ask a question? <laughs> okay, uh, somebody would like to ask a question. Okay, if it's enough aggressively, we can say yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, just do it. Just ask. So uh, she's asking. Uh, although my daughter is very kind, but I don't like her. I hate her. Yeah, so many times we are creating people who we killed or they killed us in some past lifetime. So you can make a clearing how many times did you kill each other in different lifetimes and whose turn is in this lifetime. So how many, how many times did you kill each other in different lifetimes? So how many times she killed you? How many times you killed her? And whose turn is in this lifetime? And everything is brought up right around the bed, bottom, bottom line, show what's in yours. Okay? Many times we are creating our biggest enemies from, from uh, our biggest enemies as our family members because we are trying to repay for our sins or we are trying to do revenge. So just put and pocket everything from the past and do it more times maybe. <laughs> Okay. Can I add to that? Yes. How, yes. how much is your daughter like you? How much does your daughter remind you of you? And how much do you hate yourself? Ouch. <laughs> that hurts. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, pull that. My daughter is incredible because she already created pancakes so I can eat pancakes. Oh. Plus pancakes. So now we are slowly finishing. We need to finish. I have another class very soon today. Yeah. 
So right. Anything else? Would you like to say anything else? Me or uh, yeah. Yeah, you can yeah, you, me. you, <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> me. Oh. Yeah. Yes. yes. Hi, Kaya. <laughs> Hi. And I just need to. I just want to add uh, to the last question because um. Like we, we did say, we, we did mention a couple of times in the class that uh, your, your children will remind you of you. And if you actually really find anything that's triggering you, um, what I can learn from my child is also a question you can ask when you get triggered, as in where can you see you in your child? And usually the, the things that push your button the most is the, the things that you judge the most about yourself. And everything that just brought up everywhere, like every everything that the, the the one thing, if you think of the one thing that your children would upset you the most, think about it and bring the energy up. How much is that something that you're doing with yourself, and how much is that something that you hate about yourself? You hate, you absolutely hate about yourself. And everywhere that you're not seeing that, not acknowledging that, and I instill are still in resistance and reaction to it. Would you like to destroy and uncreate it all, please? Ah, round of applause, boys and beyonds. What if like your children, you can see yourself like your child and have less judgment and have more allowance to you? Mommy. Yeah. Huh? Mommy, I said. Mm -hmm. okay. So now we need to finish. Yes. See you next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Thank translators. You. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you soon. Shukran. Shukran, Harris. Shukran. Shukran, Juan. Shukran, Harry. Juan.